Hi guys, it's Mrs. Moss here. We're going to continue talking about the seasons. And when we talk about the seasons on Earth, we actually have to come back out and look in outer space and look at the way the sun is hitting the Earth. This has everything to do with seasons, as we saw in our first video. And so now we need to take a little more closer look at the angle of insulation and the way the sun is hitting the Earth. So when I say angle of insulation, the word insulation stands for incoming solar radiation. And it refers to the energy that's received from the sun. This energy is primarily light and heat. But you knew that already because we talked about that when we looked at the electromagnetic spectrum and we talked about the energy that comes from the sun. Now we're going to look at the way the Earth gets receives the sun. So in this picture, we see incoming solar radiation, and we see the Earth absorbing mainly that light and heat energy. So the tilting of the Earth's axis towards or away from the sun will cause differences in the amount of heat that the Earth receives. And this tilt of the Earth's axis causes part of the Earth to, that's tilted towards the sun to receive direct rays from the sun. It's at a greater angle of insulation when it's tilted towards the sun. And it will also receive more hours of sunlight when the Earth is tilted towards the sun. Now when I say Earth's tilting towards the sun, we're really referring to the northern hemisphere. Because as we know, the southern hemisphere could be tilted towards the sun, and that's when we experience our winter. So when we say the Earth is tilted towards the sun, we're really referring to the northern hemisphere being tilted towards the sun. And this is a picture which shows actually the opposite of what I was just saying. It actually shows the northern hemisphere and I um, being tilted away from the sun. And I know that because I'm finding that here's the North Pole and I see that it's in the shadow and it's tilted away. So that tells us that it's winter in this picture. But the bigger picture is really showing us that because of the way we're tilted, different areas on our Earth receive different angles of insulation. So you look here, and in this instance, 23.5 degrees south is receiving a 90 degree angle of insulation. The sunlight is coming in and hitting it directly at 90 degrees on that line of latitude. Similarly, if you look at the equator and at 23 and a half degrees north, you can see that it is getting an angle of 23 degrees. So as we go up in latitude, our angle decreases when it's tilted this way. And if you look here, you can see there's the angle that is being uh, received from the um, sunlight, the energy is being received. So as latitude increases, what happens to the angle? So let's look at this picture because this depicts the different angles of insulation from the different locations as we revolve around the sun. And as you can see here, we have the Earth northern hemisphere tilted towards the sun. And I can tell that because here's the North Pole right here and it is tilted towards the sun. And here we have the direct ray of the sun hitting 23.5 degrees north latitude. That means that 90 degree angle mark is going to be right there at 23.5 at degrees north. The opposite happens during winter, just as we saw in that last slide. Here the angle, the direct angle of insulation is coming in at hitting 23.5 degrees south. Here we are tilted away from the sun, so it's winter and it's hitting directly overhead at a 90 degree angle at 23 and a half degrees south. Now if you look here, it's hard, obviously you can't really tell where it's hitting from the bottom angle um, where we, we have, uh, if this is summer, then I know this is fall, and then this is winter, so this must be spring. We can see the demonstration of the spring equinox a little bit more closely. Here you see the direct rays of the sun hitting the equator at the equinox. And we can also see that it is getting the most direct sunlight at that a great, the greatest angle of insulation there. So this is just a close-up look at those three pictures that I just showed you, really, except they took the equation of the, moon, the sun out and they put it, the sun all over uh, coming from this side. 
So in each of these instances, we can see where the sun is hitting, and you can see how it directly hits in certain locations, but in other locations, it hits it at a different angle, a lower angle. So as the line of latitude increases, our angle of insulation decreases. It's an indirect relationship. Here is another picture of our Earth's tilt and the angle of insulation from each of these locations. And you can see the perpendicular rays or the vertical rays or the rays that are hitting directly overhead are hitting right at this location in the middle right here. And we can tell because of the way that the lines were formed to draw that. There's the 90 degree angle. And you can see the way the angles are created from the insulation hitting the earth at different locations. Now we can use flashlights and paper to get this idea of the strength or intensity of the angle and the insulation. So if we take a flashlight and if we shine it at a great angle, a greater angle, a higher angle, we see that it will directly come down and form a smaller ray of light. If we hold that same flashlight at a lower degree, then we see the ray spreads out a little bit. The circle's a little greater. It covers a little wider of an area, but it is less intense at that point. The stronger energy comes when it's directly overhead. So we have another relationship. As the angle of intensity increases, the sun's intensity also increases. And as the area receiving the insulation increases, the sun's intensity will decrease. So that's another way of saying the greater span or the greater area that's receiving the sun's energy is not receiving it as intensely as if a smaller area was receiving it. And there's the little circles that I just traced. <laughs> so here's the relationship that we want you to put in your notes. As angle of insulation increases, the intensity also increases. And we also want you to take note too that this will um, be indicative when you're standing on Earth, you have to also realize that you're receiving the same amount of energy because the sun doesn't produce more energy for one area to make it hotter and produce less energy in another area to make it a little less intense or less hot. How We all receive the same amount of energy. The key is that it's hitting the Earth at different angles to make those angles spread out more and that's what makes it less intense. So, the sun's rays are more intense if the energy is concentrated in a small area, and the more direct rays or perpendicular rays are, the smaller the area and the greater the intensity or the greater the heating. So in this little diagram at the bottom that I showed you as I was talking, is that this guy here is going to be the one who gets the sunburn faster than this guy over here because he is standing right under those direct rays. They're more perpendicular to where he's standing, causing there to be more heat and more intense heat. Uh, another picture just showing as it hits the earth at a different angle, <coughs> excuse me, it will create a larger area, which means that it's less intense. When it's hitting directly, Overhead, it's a smaller area, therefore it's more intense. So the relationship between area and intensity of insulation is that as area increases, intensity decreases. And we did say that before. Now if you look at the northern hemisphere in the top picture, here we're tilted towards the sun. You can see that this is covering a smaller area than when we're tilted away from the sun. When we're tilted away from the sun, we have a larger span of area receiving insulation, and therefore we get less uh, intensity when we're tilted away from the sun, and that's in winter. And uh, also, a smaller area that's being heated, as in the summer, gives us 
more intense heat in the summer. So, for the northern hemisphere, which season is represented by this diagram? And where are the direct rays or vertical rays hitting in this diagram? Well, they're actually showing you <laughs> that this is June 21st because the sun is tilted or the northern hemisphere, I'll say, is tilted towards the sun. And again, I know that because I'm looking at the North Pole and I'm seeing that it's tilted towards the sun. And I see, too, that the direct rays are coming and hitting at 23.5 degrees north. Right there. It's summer, and it's hitting the Tropic of Cancer, which is 23.5 degrees north. So the intensity, as area of insulation increases, the intensity decreases. We did that already. So that leaves us in New York. Well... In New York, we have different angles of insulation, as we saw in the greater pictures when we were looking at the way the Earth was tilted. But if we look at the angle of insulation during winter, we see that the sun comes in at a 24 degree angle in winter. And March 21st and September 23rd, we have a, a slightly greater angle of insulation. We have, that's our equinoxes, spring and fall. And then we have the summer at 70 degree angle of insulation and that's when our sun is closest to being perpendicular. But you'll note that from these three diagrams, our sun will never, ever come directly overhead in New York. It never comes and hits us at 20, at a 90 degree angle. It may feel like it sometimes when we go outside and we see that the sun is over our head, literally, but the angle that the sun is coming from the angle of insulation from outer space and hitting our Earth is at an angle that will never reach 90 degrees in New York. And that gives you a clue, too, to tell us where we are. Now, this is just the notes that goes along with what I said, so you can certainly copy this down and hit pause. That's going to end our video on angle of insulation. I hope you have a good day, and I'll see you next time.